Welcome to this edition of Ethical Sustainable Investment News and Analysis to Profit By. I'm Ron Robbins, an ethical investing pioneer for over 40 years, quoted in the Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, The Globe and Mail, and numerous other media, and founder of the highly respected global ethical sustainable investing information website, Investing for the Soul. And please listen to my disclosure, disclaimer statement at the end of this podcast. Now enjoy this podcast. Hello, Ron Robbins here. Welcome to podcast episode 38, published on August 14th, titled, These Stocks Could Thrive Under Biden, and more, and presented by Investing for the Soul. Investingforthesoul.com is your site for vital global ethical and sustainable investing news, commentary, information, and resources. Remember that you can find a full transcript, links to content, including stock symbols and bonus material, at this episode's podcast page located at investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and Google any terms that are unfamiliar to you. Now, with the US political season heating up, Market Watch published an article titled These Green Stocks Would Thrive Under a Biden Administration According to Fund Managers. It's written by Michael Brush. Below, I'm quoting Mr. Brush at length. Quote, It's increasingly likely that the Democrats will win the White House and the Senate. For investors, that means it's time to review the environmental, social and government ESG sector, with an emphasis on green stocks that might do well under a Joe Biden presidency. For key insights and stock ideas, I, that is Michael Brush, recently spoke with three ESG fund managers with outperforming records, according to Morningstar and a policy analyst from one of the companies. First, Biden's plan is ambitious. He wants a carbon neutral power generation sector by 2035. Everything he is doing aligns with the strategy that we as ESG investors have been arguing for years, says Cheryl Smith, who manages the John Hancock ESG Large Cap Core Fund. The fund beats its Morningstar Large Cap Blend benchmark by three percentage points annualized over the past three years. I think it's great to have all these plans The difficulty is executing them, says Hubert Arts of the Pax Global Environmental Markets Fund. Arts is worth listening to because his fund outperforms its world large cap stock category by 6.6 percentage points over the past year, says Morningstar. The energy transformation is a transition which will happen with or without politicians, says Jonathan Waghorn of the Guinness Atkinson Alternative Energy Fund. His fund beats its small and mid-cap value sector benchmark by 34 percentage points over the past year and 13.6 percentage points annualized over the past three years, according to Morningstar. It can be tricky to wrangle with investing in environmental friendly stocks because there's no clear sector labelled alternative or clean energy, says Waghorn. Smith at the John Hancock ESG Large Cap Core Fund includes companies with good internal eco-friendly policies to broaden the playing field. This extends her reach into even consumer staples like Procter & Gamble, which she says is taking significant steps to become carbon neutral 
and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Now making buildings more energy efficient is the low hanging fruit of green initiatives because there is so much companies can do to reduce energy consumption in their buildings. Smith likes train technologies which offers energy efficient climate controlled systems and the Real Estate Investment Trust, Avalon Bay Communities, which specializes in energy efficient buildings. She cites Rockwell Automation, which has a division that helps companies monitor energy usage and waste. Arts singles out Acuity brands, Osram Light and Hubble in energy efficient lighting, and Schneider Electric, which sells products that help companies improve energy efficiency. Waghorn points us to Amoresco, which helps companies improve energy and lighting efficiency. Regarding green autos, it makes sense to still consider some of the arms dealers to the green car space. Here, Smith likes NXP semiconductors, which sells semiconductors used in electric powered vehicles. Waghorn likes Samsung SDI, a Korean pure play on lithium ion batteries that is building partnerships with European car manufacturers. Another play he likes is on ON Semiconductor, which sells power management chips used in the electric vehicle space. 3. Renewable Energy Companies In this area, Smith singles out Avon Grid, a major supplier of power generated from offshore wind sources. She also highlights Eaton, which sells gear that helps improve efficiency of the power grid so it can better handle power from alternative energy sources. Waghorn owns Ormat Technologies, a geothermal power generator. Next Era Energy, the largest generator of renewable energy, and TPI Composites, a materials science company that sells lightweight materials used in wind turbine blades. Arts highlights Orsted, a green energy provider based in Denmark. On green agriculture, in this space, Arts likes Trimble because it offers satellite images used by farmers to reduce waste of pesticides and water. He also cites Koninklijk DSM. Sorry, I probably got that mispronounced. This is a Dutch company that sells clean cow food that reduces the emission of methane from bovines. He also says Agilent Technologies will play a role in green farming because it sells gear used in testing levels of pollution in water, air and soil. End quotes. Three writers at the Motley Fool have each chosen their top pick in a post titled Three Top Renewable Energy Stocks to Buy in August. Travis Hoyum likes Bloom Energy. He writes that Bloom Energy recently announced a solid oxide electrolyzer that will convert electricity and water into hydrogen fuel, which is usable in electricity generating fuel cells. This can make hydrogen a viable fuel for shipping, long haul trucking, and even grid applications. It's even possible that hydrogen fuel could be pumped around the country using pipelines. Bloom Energy isn't yet profitable, but it has the chance to upend fossil fuel energy as we know it. End quote. Howard Smith suggests Next Era Energy. He says that Next Era Energy is a Florida-based company that owns Florida Power and Light, the largest regulated electric utility in the US, as well as Gulf Power. 
Its other subsidiary is Next Era Energy Resources. This segment, along with its affiliates, is the world's largest generator of wind and solar power and invests in battery storage. Next Era estimates it can provide investors an annual total return of 10 to 12 percent through 2022 with earnings growth and dividends, in large part due to growth in the renewable segment. End quote. Jason Hall recommends Clean Energy Fuels Corp. Mr. Hall writes that, quote, Clean Energy Fuels hasn't been a good investment over the past seven or eight years. Management made a leverage bet that trucking would shift quickly from diesel to natural gas. But the bet backfired during the last oil collapse when growth slowed to a crawl. Instead of focusing on these past mistakes, investors would do well to take a hard look at the company. Here's the major reason it's a buy now stock. For all the press that electric and hydrogen trucks get, renewable natural gas is the leader in zero emissions fuels for trucking and is likely to remain so for years to come. Clean energy fuels is the dominant supplier of renewable natural gas. End quote. From investing.com, there's this article titled Worried about investing ethically? These two ETFs can put you on the right track. I'll first mention the ETF and follow it with relevant quotes from the article. 1. The Vanguard ESG US Stock Fund seeks to track the performance of the FTSE U.S. All-Cap Choice Index. The fund is screened for certain ESG criteria and specifically excludes stocks of companies in adult entertainment, alcohol, tobacco, weapons, fossil fuels, gambling and nuclear power. Additionally, stocks of individual companies that do not meet certain diversity criteria as well as the principles of the United Nations Global Compact, are not included. Year-to-date, the fund is up over 7%. On August 5th, it hit an all-time high of $61.08. Two is iShares MSCI Global Impact ETF. Follows the MSCI ACWI Sustainable Impact Index. This benchmark index is composed of positive impact companies that derive a majority of their revenue from products and services that address at least one of the world's major social or environmental challenges as identified by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, such as education, or climate change." End quotes. Now I also thought that this might interest many ethical and sustainable investors. The article is titled Franklin Templeton Launches Muni Green Bond Fund. The article's author is Emily Holbrook. These are some of her remarks. Quote, Franklin Templeton has launched the Franklin Municipal Green Bond Fund, one of the few strategies solely focused on Muni Green Bonds. The fund seeks to maximize income exempt from federal income taxes by investing in green bonds, including climate bonds, sustainability bonds, and environmental impact bonds. Franklin Templeton said the municipal green bond market is young and continues to evolve. The universe of U.S. municipal green bond issuers includes states, cities, municipal water and sewer enterprises, transportation systems, 
universities and hospitals, among others. End quotes. Well, these are my top news stories and tips for this podcast. The stocks could thrive under Biden and more. And to get all the links, stock symbols and more, or to read the transcript of this podcast and with additional information too, please go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and scroll down to this episode. Also, be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons in iTunes, Apple Podcasts or wherever you download or listen to this podcast. And please click the share buttons to share this podcast with your friends and family. That way, you can help promote not only this podcast, but ethical and sustainable investing globally. We can all do our part in helping create a better world, especially in these horribly troubled times. Contact me if you have any questions. Stay well, healthy, and investment-wise. Thank you for listening. Talk to you again on August 28th. Bye for now. Learn how to create a simple portfolio reflecting your personal values by taking my one-hour tutorial. Go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and click the link in the right-hand column for my DIY Ethical Sustainable Investing Pays tutorial. Now, I'll mention in the podcast if I have any direct interest or holdings in companies or securities I'm talking about. Furthermore, any news, opinions, analysis or other information offered by myself, as well as references and information to or from other external sources in this podcast is provided as general market information and should not be relied upon and thus does not constitute investment advice. Investors should consult their own licensed investment professional before making investments. Also, I will not accept liability for any loss or damage, including without limitation any loss of profit which may arise directly or indirectly from use of or reliance on information in this podcast. Do contact me at ron r at investingforthesoul.com. Signing off, this is Ron Robbins.